Technical Tuesday. I'm Haley Lowy. I'm a marketing lead at SingularityNet. I'm honored to be here today. Uh, standing in for Janet, she should be joining us in uh, a little bit. She's got some important operations occurring right now, and we hope to see her shortly. But I have the honor of getting to speak with this uh, lovely team of AGI experts. Today, we're going to be covering uh, the section on the BGI for uh, progress in 2023 blog. And we're going to be covering the Hyperon in 2023 sections. So we just want to take a, a deep dive into all of the hard work and amazing advancements that happened last year. They're still ongoing. We're preparing to launch the alpha of Meta and bring this to a, a wider community. And we just want to share more with everybody in SingularityNet what that means and what we've been doing um, to prepare for this. So welcome all. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'd love to start first with uh, Alexei. You've been absolutely critical, the backbone of building the, the meta system. And can you give us just an overview of 2023 in meta development, what we were working on, and what progress we made? Uh, hi, everyone. Yes, and uh, uh, thanks, Haley, for uh, this introduction. Uh, but uh, as for the implementation, uh, it was uh, mainly Vitaly and then uh, Luke. Uh, but uh, yeah, uh, as for uh, 2023, there were a lot of things uh, uh, going on in uh, the core meta development. And uh, maybe uh, the main... Uh, uh, achievement was uh, that uh, uh, Vitaly has uh, created a, a minimal meta, which uh, is uh, it, it's uh, uh, well, uh, uh, meta uh, had been de developing. Uh, we both had uh, a vision on uh, how it uh, should look like and how it should work, but uh, uh, some uh, things uh, were uh, observed from practice and some design choices were uh, done. Uh, uh, f uh using uh, the feedback of uh, early adopters of meta uh, and um, uh, this uh, led uh, to an uh, interpret implementation with uh, a, a lot of uh, conditions and so on and uh, vitaly decided to uh, rewrite uh, this ad hoc uh, implementation uh using uh, uh, s uh, very few uh, basic primitives and uh, he succeeded in doing this, so he generalized uh, uh, our experience uh, with uh, attempts to apply uh, Meta in uh, different applications, including uh, PLN, uh, which uh, Matt uh, uh, will be talking about. Uh, and um, uh, it is uh, very uh, cool because uh, uh, now we have a few uh, very basic uh, uh, primitives uh, and uh, the interpreter of uh, meta is uh, implemented uh, using these primitives uh, in meta itself uh, and uh, this uh, opens uh, up a lot of uh, possibilities for uh, further studies uh, uh, because uh, right, right now we can rewrite uh, the interpreter in meta uh, and uh, have uh, a, a lot of fun with uh, uh, inference control with uh, implementing different uh, uh, types uh, of uh, uh, inference engines uh, like probabilistic programming uh, engine or uh, some uh, concurrency stuff which uh, uh, was uh, mostly uh, related to Greg's uh, uh, meta to Ro. Uh, Roland and uh, Greg will be talking about this. Uh, but uh, in, in any case, uh, we uh, have started uh, uh, with this uh, more deeper uh, research and development, uh, uh, which uh, was actually our original goal. So uh, we have uh, all, all the basics. Uh, we are uh, standing on some ground and we can uh, continue uh, our uh, more AGI-ish R&D from uh, this point. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, this year, I mean, to, uh, 2023 was not only about uh, uh, core meta development, but uh, uh, we also uh, uh, have been developing uh, uh, other components, uh, uh, and uh, so some of them were envisioned uh, uh, 
uh, very early and uh, they constitute a cock prime architecture which is uh, right now called uh, primus which uh, we uh, uh, discussed a little bit uh, during the last technical tuesday uh, but uh, besides this uh, we of course were quite focused uh, on uh, a neural symbolic integration of uh, uh, hyperon and uh, llms and uh, uh, we developed a prototype, a proof of concept uh, implementation uh, of uh, such uh, neural symbolic integration uh, with LLMs, which is called uh, Metamod. And uh, uh, using this, we also implemented a prototype of Singularity Net Marketplace and Platform Assistant. Uh, so it uh, proved itself uh, to uh, to be working and. Uh, uh, we hope uh, to develop uh, it uh, further using uh, uh, other use cases, but it's uh, about plans and not uh, uh, what uh, has been done. So uh, basically, Metamod uh, is uh, like uh, length chain or guidance uh, frameworks, uh, uh, but uh, it uh, allows uh, uh, us uh, to connect everything uh, in one place uh, to uh, have uh, uh, re reasoning, uh, interoperating with uh, knowledge-based queries, interoperating uh, with uh, queries uh, uh, to LLMs, uh, uh, and uh, as these queries can be um, combined, controlled, uh, tweaked, modified, transformed uh, uh, using uh, queries to other components uh, as well. So uh, uh, we envision it as uh, quite a powerful uh, framework, uh, but uh, it's uh, also uh, just uh, the beginning of uh, our road here. Uh, maybe these are the main uh, parts I would like to cover, and uh, uh, I believe uh, Matt will uh, continue with uh, other important stuff uh, which uh, uh, he has been uh, supervising. So, Matt, please. Um, sure. Uh, I think uh, Alexei gave a wonderful overview of kind of the meta, I, I like the, which, as Alexei said, forms the backbone, so to speak, of, of, of Hyperon. It's kind of, we, there was a point where we kind of thought about glue on because it's the glue that connects all the uh, various uh, pieces together. Um, and uh, so I've had the pleasure of overseeing quite a few pieces of, of Hyperon development. Um, front of mind at the moment is uh, AI DSL or AI domain specific language. Um, and considerable progress was made in this direction. So perhaps a little background of, of what AI DSL is, is meant to achieve in the context of Hyperon and the Singularity platform and, and Marketplace. Um, so it's meant to be a, we could call it almost a meta service on, on, on the platform. It's gonna be integrated into the meta SDK. So it, it's gonna be native uh, meta program. Um, and the, the goal is essentially to, to think of having uh, foundational services that can be mixed and matched depending on user needs and, and, and wants. So, uh, and interoperate together to create more complex um, services. Uh, for example, uh, suppose a, a user has particular data they want to import, input, uh, and try to get some particular uh, AI service output out as a, re a result of that. Uh, the goal is that you would send it to the AI DSL. The AI DSL would, would then forward that and say, what service asks ask the marketplace? What services out there are out there that can provide what this user wants? And perhaps there is a, an already a service that 
does that, but more than likely, um, it might take multiple services. So um, the first service might say, hey, well, I, I can give you this part. I can take this input and, and give you this output, but maybe some other service can take that output and chain these together to get to the final the final answer. And the, the, the goal here is that all of this happens under the hood autonomously. Um, and so with that in mind, uh, we've actually made considerable pro pro uh, progress towards this end. Dr. Uh, Neil Geisweiler and, um, and several other members of, of, of his team uh, have really made incredible progress uh, in program synthesis and program composition. So uh, this is, these are the underlying tools uh, necessary to achieve this. So I'll leave it there for the moment, but maybe we can pick that up uh, later on as well. Absolutely, yes. It's it's such an important technology, uh, AI DSL enabling different AI services, small subservices or or or, or Lego like services to string together exactly. to become a more intelligent more intelligent system. So perhaps uh, I would just like to check in again with Alexei. Um, you mentioned that we're building this this meta to be you know building a neural symbolic system can you dive just a little bit into what neural symbolic ai is how meta enables this and what are the uh, advantages this this feeds heavily into ai dsl pulling together multiple services uh, as well but if you could cover some of the background and, and what neural symbolic is and, and how opencog hyperon enables that type of ai system alexei well, uh, as for OpenCock uh, Hyperon and General Symbolic Integration, uh, uh, there are actually different uh, approaches uh, uh, how it uh, can be done. And um, uh, currently, Metamoto uh, is a shallow integration. It is uh, not that uh, extremely interesting uh, in this case because uh, uh, it uh, considers uh, LLMs as uh, black boxes uh, uh, and um, it works uh, through inputs and uh, outputs uh, to LLMs. Uh, uh, but uh, in, in any case, uh, it uh, still uh, uh, provides uh, interesting opportunities because, uh, as I mentioned, um, uh, using the same uh, language for querying uh, knowledge graphs, for reasoning, and uh, uh, when we can uh, use uh, the, the same language, uh, uh, to communicate to LLMs, uh, uh, then uh, everything uh, uh, can be combined in different uh, uh, interesting ways. Uh, mm, so we, we have uh, a few uh, tutorials on uh, Metamoto itself. Uh, if uh, uh, it will be of uh, interest, uh, we can uh, go into uh, more detail. But uh, if we are talking about uh, uh, neural symbolic uh, integration in general, uh, Initially, we were working uh, with a deeper integration uh, uh, when it uh, was uh, still OpenCock Classic. Uh, uh, neural uh, networks uh, were uh, wrapped into atoms in the atom space and uh, they uh, could be invoked uh, uh, by demand of a reasoning system and uh, uh, we could uh, run uh, uh, DNNs uh, in the course of reasoning and uh, uh, computational graphs uh, of, uh, say, TensorFlow or uh, PyTorch, uh, they were not, not broken, and uh, we could uh, pass uh, uh, si training signals uh, through DNNs and assembled uh, uh, in the course uh, of reasoning. Uh, it was called uh, cognitive module networks, and uh, one of uh, motivations uh, behind uh, uh, building Hyperon and uh, Meta was uh, to uh, make uh, these uh, operations uh, even uh, smoother because in OpenCock Classic uh, there uh, were some uh, inconveniences uh, and limitations. Uh, but uh, we have not yet uh, started uh, uh, playing with this because uh, <laughs> LLMs uh, 
uh, were just uh, too big uh, during 2023. Uh, but we believe that uh, deeper integration uh, uh, will be uh, needed. And uh, for example, we <clears throat> have been considering uh, uh, interactions uh, between uh, LLMs uh, and uh, uh, atom space, not via inputs and uh, outputs, uh, uh, but uh, uh, using uh, uh, intermediate uh, layers. Uh, for example, if we have a knowledge graph, uh, not just an external uh, storage for querying like uh, your uh, as it is uh, commonly used uh, right now in retrieval augmented uh, generation uh, you just uh, uh, say an uh, LLM uh, to generate a query to a knowledge graph it generates a query retrieves uh, some information and this information is uh, uh, put uh, into the next prompt to LLM. So it operates uh, through inputs uh, and outputs only. Uh, we believe that uh, uh, intermediate levels of attention heads uh, can uh, uh, query knowledge graphs in the course of uh, uh, LLM inference, for example. There are different uh, uh, possibilities uh, of uh, uh, such uh, uh, kind and uh, another, another possibility is uh, to have uh, um, uh, graph embeddings of uh, atom space, for example, and uh, to make uh, uh, meta language itself differentiable. Uh, it's uh, another way of uh, possible uh, research of direction, uh, the direction of research. Uh, but uh, well, maybe I kind of. Uh, I lose track of the question. So, uh, oh, is it okay? Yeah, no, it's it's wonderful. So, I think you're pointing at how a lot of the current LLMs, uh, they're this 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 sub symbolic level, right? You know, where it's just processing information. It doesn't really have any sense. It's just a, a probabilistic soup of 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 generating responses and people have been trying to kind of tack on knowledge graphs so that the llm can verify its information and, and be less hallucinatory where where opencog has been designed from the ground up to have this sub symbolic layer but also to have the symbolic layer the atom space itself where knowledge can be stored in a way that's recognizable to humans that can be reasoned upon um in a way that that we would recognize and and participate with and again built that way from the ground i'm not just kind of sticking a knowledge graph on a, a technology that's that's working but but actually building these two things so they work synergistically more like how how we do am i interpreting that correctly uh, well, yeah, if we are talking about uh, for what reason uh, this neural symbolic uh, integration can be done, then yeah, for, for sure, uh, LLMs, uh, the uh, bottom up uh, processors, uh, so uh, they don't uh, kind of reason, then they uh, just go from uh, the da data to uh, some uh, output. Uh, of course, if we uh, have uh, some uh, cycles uh, uh, chained calls to LLMs, uh, it becomes not that straightforward, uh, but uh, still uh, uh, they work like this. So they uh, hash uh, a, a lot of data, they interpolate it and uh, recombine it, but uh, still uh, they uh, provide a reflex like uh, output uh, uh, while uh, humans. Uh, are reasoning in a little bit uh, different way. So uh, besides uh, sort of uh, intuition, which uh, is also an instant re response, uh, uh, instant in terms uh, of uh, uh, no recurrent uh, connections. So it's uh, just uh, uh, like one-way processing. Uh, we also have uh, like a, a consistent or para-consistent uh, world model over which we can uh, a reason we can imagine what will happen if we uh, do one uh, thing or another. Uh, and uh, we have uh, imagination, which is also a sort of a generative model, but uh, uh, the difference uh, is that uh, we uh, perform a uh, conditional inference over this uh, generative model. So we imagine different paths of what uh, is happening. We filter out them uh, uh, based on some declarative knowledge and uh, uh, th th that's why 
uh, we uh, are not hallucinating as much as uh, uh, LLMs because uh, they just uh, uh, recombine some pieces uh, uh, in a reasonable but uh, not uh, consistent way. Uh, uh, and uh, they, they cannot uh, solve for really new problems for the same uh, uh, reason. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, neural symbolic systems uh, are trying to mitigate uh, th these problems because we just uh, uh, want uh, to uh, uh, not limit our uh, AI or proto AGI systems to be just trained reflexes, but uh, 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 for them to have. Uh, are consistent world model uh, knowledge base and uh, uh, reasoning capabilities. So uh, they, uh, 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 in this case, they have uh, they can have some uh, goals uh, or some tasks, and uh, uh, they can track uh, if uh, this is achieved or not, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. We have talked uh, about this. Uh, uh, on the example of uh, Minecraft agents, for example, uh, because uh, when uh, you have uh, just uh, uh, reflex-like uh, behavior, it uh, uh, can easily stack, uh, uh, and um, it, it, it has uh, no capabilities of uh, understanding uh, it is stuck. Uh, uh, but uh, if uh, you have a goal, if you have an overall picture of uh, what is happening, uh, then you can analyze uh, uh, this situation and uh, understand if uh, you can do something or <laughs> if you cannot, then uh, you can just uh, uh, resort to uh, random actions, which is actually quite uh, often observed uh, in uh, nature because uh, uh, when uh, uh, some animal, uh, it's true even for animals, actually uh, intelligence is uh, awoken when uh, uh, you stuck when you are not stuck. You can uh, 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 avoid thinking. You just uh, can uh, do some uh, uh, custom things what uh, you are used to, to be doing, and uh, it doesn't really uh, require intelligence. And uh, unfortunately, LLMs are very uh, good at uh, uh, doing good things without thinking, and the neural symbolic uh, uh, systems. Uh, uh, is a way to extend uh, uh, this uh, approach and uh, to incorporate uh, much more interesting processes and capabilities. So. Yeah, thank you very much. That's a, a a very potent example. Yes, when I'm when I'm not stuck, I can kind of operate on on autopilot in many things. Uh, when I get stuck is when I need to turn that thinker on and I need to do something genuinely creative and intelligent and relevant to the situation with foresight of how that action might might interact and, and, and have awareness of that. And modeling that, building that, you know, based on the only intelligent animal that we know is complex, obviously, and, and uh, inspiring the ways that, that we're looking at it. I want to dive in just a little bit. You mentioned Minecraft. And uh, we, of course, in the, the blog, we mentioned the, the dialogue system that our, our robots and agents and, and virtual agents work on. I want to dive into some of these use cases and others. But first, Greg, you've been absolutely critical um, looking at how do we make this type of processing scalable through concurrency and, and other means. Can you talk a little bit about your work in, in Meta and your collaboration with, with the OpenCog Hyperon team? Oh, yeah. Uh, first of all, thanks thanks for uh, inviting me to join the conversation. It's a, it's a pleasure to work with the, uh, the <clears throat> SNET community and the Hyperon team in particular. Some of the, some of the smartest engineers I've ever met are on the uh, on the Hyperon team, uh, so it's great. It's really a, a pleasure to be able to work with everyone. Um, uh, it was it was quite uh, uh, quite quite interesting to um, uh, encounter Meta for the first time. And the the first thing that we did before we started looking at uh, scaling it out was just to understand what is Meta, <laughs> what does it do, how does it work. Um, and so just uh, with, within a month or so of uh, chatting with a bunch of engineers, uh, notably uh, Adam Vandervorst, um, uh, I, but also um, also Ben and, uh, and Alexi's team, and also uh, Jonathan Worrell, who is, uh, is really an extraordinary uh, researcher, um, uh, we crafted uh, an operational semantics for Meta. Um, 
And so I put a link in the chat for people uh, where, where we, we published the operational semantics. Um, and oh, I, I wanted to apologize. I did not bring my uh, leopard skin beret, but uh, maybe next time. Um, <clears throat> uh, anyway, um, uh, uh, people, people can, can check that out. Uh, what, what, that, what that does is it, it uh, attempts to describe um, how Meta operates with as little... Um, <laughs> Meta is Facebook. I love it. <laughs> this is M-E-T-T-A. <laughs> um, uh, 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 with, with as little commitment uh, to concurrency or uh, a concurrent or um, uh, 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 sequential processing as possible, um, but at the same time beginning to expose uh, the boundaries between what, what it means to execute um, the the uh, meta operations uh, concurrently uh, versus executing them sequentially, and I think you know fr from a very practical point of view, uh, the way we've been scaling software systems for the last fifty years is by throwing hardware at it, right? I mean, it's just like that's how you do it, right? Um, and and it's it's in, it's interesting how many different uh, younger uh, technology sectors haven't actually figured that out. Um, I think uh, bl blockchain is a really good example where that hasn't been figured out. Um, in particular, as blockchain networks add more hardware, they get slower. And, and so that's a, that, 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 that's a no go. <laughs> uh, so, so what you have to have, uh, if you want to survive in today's software world is you have to have an architecture in which um, as you add more hardware, and in particular, as you add more processors, um, your, uh, your throughput uh, and overall processing gets faster. Um, so so that's, that's where um, the Firefly uh, stuff comes in, and, and in particular where Rolang comes in. Uh, so Rolang gives you this ability uh, to uh, write code in such a way that um, it, um, the processing will eat as much um, physical hardware as you can throw at it. So if the algorithm you write in Rolang is concurrent uh, and, um, and uh, th then uh, if you the more processing you can throw at it, the more Rolang will make it run faster. So we, we spent some time analyzing uh, the meta semantics and have proposed uh, some various compilation strategies uh, for how to make it run faster. But also, we can do this in a setting where um, uh, where it is actually decentralized. So, if it's okay, I'll share a screen and 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 show what uh, what what I mean by that. So, I think yes, please. This gives me the opportunity to share a screen, and let's see. Does it let me? That huh? Doesn't seem to want to let me share the entire desktop okay uh hang on a second um oh i see share entire screen there we go okay all right and now um let me see can you see that yes fantastic uh, so, so here, what we're looking at is what might be a typical deployment, where you've got uh, a couple of servers uh, in uh, a data center in Dubai, a couple of servers in a data center in Shanghai, uh, some more servers in a data center in London, and some more uh, servers in a data center in Seattle. And, um, and for each of these servers, uh, we are running some number of nodes, and the total number of nodes represents a shard over which you might have uh, meta executing, All right? So each each one of these ultimately uh, contains a copy of the entire atom space that meta is processing. Um, and in a setting like this, if you want to be actually decentralized, um, then uh, these nodes are actually on the public side of a firewall, not on the private side of a firewall. Right, so it's it's not controlled by private interests, right? It's 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 a public network that 
that uh, many people can access. But since many people can access, uh, then, then what happens is that bad actors will ultimately, you know, attempt to, uh, 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 to make things go south in one way or another. Um, and so just like every other um, application on the planet uh, that has a, a, an internet facing API from Google to the Guardian, um, all of those are token protected. So you have to, you have to find some source of tokens. In the case of Google, you have to walk up to their website and get, uh, uh, and get one of their access tokens. Um, in the case of Ethereum, you have to have uh, Ether uh, in order to, uh, 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 to submit um, uh, a Solidity code to the network. And the same thing is true of Firefly networks, right? So you'll, you'll have tokens. And that way, bad actors, they, they, they simply can't overrun the network because there's only a finite token supply. Um, but but uh, uh, um, legitimate users um, who, who have both tokens and meta code that they want to run, they can submit these. And then what we've done is we've enabled the Firefly nodes uh, to have compilers inside them uh, so that the compiler compiles from uh, meta down into Rolang and then runs it on, on the node. And in fact, each copy of the node will either execute or verify the execution of, um, of, of the, the compiled meta code. So that, that gives you just a rough picture. I, I, won't, I won't belabor the point. Uh, let me go back here and stop the screen share. Uh, is the screen off? Yes, it is. Thank you, Greg. Yeah, that was, that was fantastic. It's so important to see how how we're building scalability, we're building concurrency, we're building uh, building decentralization in from the ground up to this super important technology that we're we're trying to to invent, create. Yeah, I I, I agree. I, I think it's it's really important, but it's also important uh, to to understand um, that uh, uh, there are many other aspects with respect to decentralization. Right, so one of the things that I I uh, lay awake at night worried about is that e even very smart, completely legitimate users make mistakes, right? <laughs> right, they they commit mistakes all the time, and you need to be able to catch those mistakes. And intriguingly, uh, in relationship to to Alexi's point, when um, you know when you're stuck. That's when intelligence arises. The similar similar kinds of things happen when you make a mistake, right? So that's when intelligence arises. And uh, the other side of what um, Firefly is doing for Meta and SingularityNet is uh, providing both security and analysis tools. So we have an algorithm which we uh, call OSLF. It's just um, um, and. <clears throat> And uh, 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 it, it stands for operational semantics in logical form, but you know OSLF is a lot easier to pronounce. <laughs> um, but 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 the but the point is that the algorithm eats whatever model of computation you give it. So whether it's Meta or Rolang or JavaScript or Java, it eats that model of computation and produces um, a, a logic or a type system which can be used to analyze um, programs, right? And those the, 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 the formulae in this logic can help you, on the one hand, detect issues like, am I leaking secrets? Um, or uh, do I have a deadlock? Or do I have a race condition? Right? So these are things that you can detect at compile time, but it also works as a query language. So you can go and investigate an atom space or uh, any, or a GitHub repo for that matter, uh, for programs with particular properties, right? And that, that uh, so that gives you a hint of the kinds of um, AI capabilities uh, one might expect in the not too distant future, where you can have programs reasoning about programs in a fairly sophisticated fashion um, that you're not going to get uh, from the point of view in, of an LLM. I mean, one, one of the things I worry about so much uh, when, I, when I think about LLMs is they've been trained on repositories like GitHub, which means they've been trained on all the bugs <laughs> that I 
and millions of other programmers have committed. <laughs> and, and I have watched <laughs> ChatGPT spit out those very same bugs when I asked them to code it. <laughs> Absolutely, uh, yeah. So replicating our, our errors as well as our, our triumphs. Exactly. And, and building, so. building in verification for, for reasoning at every level, right? O across a whole program, across a, a, a language, across a, an idea, a node in, in Atom space. So, so important to under to have the system be able to understand and reason and look at what it's doing, reflect on what it's doing. Totally. Yeah. Exactly so. Awesome. Yes. We had a question uh, that you probably can answer best. Uh, is it possible to replace Meta completely by Rolang? Uh, well, I mean, every, you know, at some point, I, um, once you have a, a, a functionally complete language, then you can kind of replace any language with any language, right? You could, you could, you could replace Meta with assembly language. Do you want to? I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Right. So I, I think I think each language is designed to serve a particular community who thinks about processing in a particular way. Right. Um, and, the language and so for our thinking. Yeah. 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 Exactly. But but in this connection, let let me do. Say some. This is something I, I did. I was hoping we, we might uh, touch on in uh, in this live stream. One of the things that, that that as a student of both human psychology and computing, I've looked at how various ways of thinking about computing are informed by human psychology, but also how they inform our psychology, right? And and, and one of the things that's really interesting is that it took until the 1990s before we had formal models of computation in which there was no one in charge, in which you could reason about societies of agents, right? So if you look at the Lambda calculus, which is a functional programming model, there's a general in charge. There's a top dog who then organizes the, you know, the, the tree of computations in terms of the next level of top dog and so forth. And it wasn't until it wasn't until the mobile processing uh, 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 calculi that, that, uh, um, that, that we began to see a way of thinking about computation and therefore thinking about human society and human communication where there wasn't a top dog, where there's autonomy, right? And, and, and that's, I think that's going to be very important as we begin to think about um, artificial general intelligence. If it works the way I think we want it to work, it will be autonomous, right? And so far, humans have not shown a lot of sophistication when it comes to recognizing the autonomy of other species. As a beekeeper, this is very this is very central to me. Um, you know. When I go out and listen to my beehives, it's very clear that they're talking. You just have to listen, right? And, and you can hear when the hive is, is calm. You can hear when the hive is upset, right? There's a ton of information coming out of the hive, right? And so I recognize the intelligence of the hive. Um, uh, but I, I think in aggregate, human society views apiculture entirely you know, bees are a resource, we use them and we harvest what they produce. But that's that's still very much a top dog controlling kind of thing, as opposed to we're all in this together. <laughs> and, recognizing and, recognizing yeah, the exactly. autonomy of agents at every level, right? The, the hive exactly. itself, the individual bees, the ecosystem that they're thriving within. Yeah, and 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 we've built that in from the ground up as well. Looking to have autonomous AI agents coordinating via Meta on the distributed atom space, which then becomes a, a more cognizant system itself. I want to pop to just a couple more topics. Um, there's never enough time. Uh, I was hoping that you could touch a little bit on on some of the use cases that we're implementing. You know, even now, this is a, a question that's been asked by our, our beautiful uh, viewers. Uh, and, and they're very curious about, everybody's very curious about how we're acting on this. And Vita, I'd like to, to come to you after Matt to talk just a little bit about what's next. What's the roadmap as a project manager for Hyperon? What are we, what are we looking forward to? Thanks. Matt? I'll, I'll try to 
address the questions. Um, there's a lot of grist that Greg just talked about that I could talk about for a long time as, as well regarding uh, cooperation, swarm intelligence, uh, emergent phenomena, um, addressing some of the other questions that are popping up in the as, as we talk. Um, but I, I just wanted to, to formulate a few things. I'll, I want to leave Vita plenty of time to, to finish up on uh, the roadmap. So, so Hyperon is the next, the, the, the new generation of, of OpenCog. And OpenCog has actually been used, the OpenCog Classic, to in a number uh, of different applications. And as we, I could, uh, in, an, in, in many different domains, um, biological domains, um, financial domains, uh, just a couple, to name a couple. As we go about, developing uh, the Hyperon framework, we are already using use cases to guide that development. Uh, one particular example that's in, in development right now is our biomedical research platform that we're porting from OpenCog Plas Classic into, into Hyperon making use of a lot of the uh, technologies that uh, Alexei already mentioned in terms of connecting LLMs and, and knowledge graphs uh, and, and together. Uh, and I'll just, there are a number of other initiatives that I can't speak too much about because they've not been, um, publicly discussed yet, but within our ecosystem, uh, we've got use cases under development in the legal domain. We've got use cases um, under development in the motorsports domain. Uh, we're working with a couple of, of companies in, 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 those re in those particularly. Our spinoffs are involved in, in uh, the financial domains, again, using LLMs and coupled with the, the neural symbolic um, architecture uh, that uh, Alexei um, discussed as, as, and, and Greg also discussed. I, I could continue uh, other, um, and the smart cities domain is a, another, uh, example. So, um, it, I would. I, it could take me a long time just touching on any any one of those. So, um, but it's, we're. But the idea is, as we develop Hyperon, we're using, it, for example, longevity genomics to guide what what are the features that are needed within meta and how does that feed back into the development cycle uh, and so i think that that's uh, super important we're not just developing meta and hyperon uh, and all the supporting neural symbolic infrastructure in a vacuum we're doing it with all these use cases in mind with this ultimate goal of, of artificial general intelligence based upon, I would argue, a lot of the current uh, research uh, in coming out of the neuroscience field, uh, coming out of complex dynamical systems, uh, as well as the latest in language de design and the foundation, the foundations, which um, as a mathematician uh, graduating 
uh, at, with a PhD uh, years ago, even the foundations um, have, uh, have changed. So all of these coming together in, in, in unique manner to create these phase transitions, this emergence of uh, truly general artificial intelligence. And I'll, I'll leave the remaining uh, time. I hope I didn't spend too much time there. Uh, it's so important. To, As you to, say, we can't we can't develop an AGI in a vacuum. You 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 literally can't. You need some some goals, some some direction. One, one other thing I tuning towards. did mean did want to to mention is some of the other things that we're bringing into this development is experiential learning. Uh, so um, Barrick Cook and Patrick Hammer and um, Peter Isaiev. Uh, all working in this kind of how we explore the the world through our you know there's some some um, Greg touched on kind of the nature aspects I would argue but there's there's a nature and a nurture aspect there's some every species does have some automatic instincts. Um, that's been pretty proven, but there's also the nurturing aspect. And, and the title of today's talks is Towards a Beneficial AGI. And that's got to come from the nurturing aspects and the teaching from the, from the parents, which you think of AGI would be us to the children, which would be the... Anyway, so, I'll, I'll, I'll leave the remainder of my time it, for as as someone for, termed for it, we're the, the we're the midwives of AGI, right? We're we're bringing it, we're helping it birth. <laughs> so on that note, and I'm glad you mentioned experiential learning. We uh, will be diving into that in our next technical Tuesday, looking at um, from core tech developments to applications. Right? This is this is a topic unto itself. LLMs. Uh, and AGI, Neural Symbolic Synergy, and then some of our experiential learning projects. So we get to we get to take a deeper dive next week in that. But uh, Vita, if you can share with us, looking forward, what do we have to look forward to? What's next? What's coming on the Hyperon roadmap? Well, uh, of course, uh, Alpha Release is coming. And uh, you see here, we have balloons as uh, th there is a super feeling of uh, completed work. Uh, so, so much work is already done and so much work is uh, going further. So uh, Alpha Release is a really important step for us. And uh, well, you know, actually it, it is kind of experimentational uh, point. So uh, if intelligence uh, rises when we do mistakes, then uh, we should be the most intelligent people in the world as uh, uh, experimenting. We, we, we are doing a lot of mistakes. And uh, yeah, uh, so I, I hope that no one from the audience would be discouraged with our success as actually we are, we are developing a new technology so um and meta is a really tricky system and it, it is a, a language that uh, is actually a way of thinking and uh, documentation is the second uh, the most important uh, milestone here. So, um, it, well, there there are a lot of people uh, constantly asking us, uh, "Where is your documentation?" We are working on it, and actually, it is it is it is uh, tricky to explain uh, you how you should uh, apply to anything. So. Um, uh, th there was a question in the chat. Um, 
about uh, the form of this uh, tutorial. So it, it will be all in the website and uh, where you can uh, read the tutorials. Uh, there will be uh, online play playground for the language so you can execute uh, the code uh, online. And uh, also we are preparing some educational resources like uh, videos, but uh, uh, hopefully they will be soon, but not by alpha release. So by alpha release, we, 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 we are preparing the website itself. And um, uh, th there was also a question, can you give some advice to the community on how they could help to share your work on Hyperon in AI spaces? And can you provide content how it will be simplify some hard problems. So we, we will try to address all, all these questions on the website and maybe uh, we will uh, have a page uh, um, where you can um, ask us questions. So um, hopefully we, we will do enough uh, for people to understand how it works. And um, there, there, there was also was a question: Is Hyperion for normal users or just experts? And uh, I would say that it is for normal AGI developers. Uh, it is uh, su such a technology that uh, that uh, touches uh, mostly AGI research, and uh, uh, so. AGI research and technology development is what we are actually going to do with uh, all this stuff. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, this is our major post alpha release plan. Uh, and uh, it includes uh, Primus uh, reasoning engine and uh, everything which is connected to reasoning systems. Uh, we are trying to bind uh, all together uh, everything that exists in science and um, yeah so and basically all these applications uh, really help us i mean biotom space uh, robotics and uh, other spin-offs uh, and non-spin-offs uh, we, we are trying to um, address mostly what it is all for so applications is what uh, is our main engine for for uh, development for m moving further. So um, and um, yeah, for people not to be discouraged, I also would like to mention that. Um, Post-alpha release plan includes performance improvements of Meta and uh, uh, basically by means of uh, Meta compila compilation, well, th there will be some basic compilation uh, by alpha release, not yet, but uh, it is uh, really progressing. Um, and uh, later we will continue with uh, some concurrency support and uh, you know, th there are some um, cosmic uh, plans, and I hope that uh, many of these will be reached uh, by the end of this year, and uh, many more will be reached um, by the end of the next year. And of course, it is uh, super important that we are cooperating with platform. Uh, I mean, Singularity Net platform, and uh, we we are trying to develop this Meta SDK, uh, which I think uh, Alexei will um, tell you more. Um, so it, it is it it includes um, AI DSL and uh, all this LLM stuff. So it's kind of a tricky system. Um, yeah, but but it is really important. Yeah, I would uh, like to uh, mention that it uh, really goes uh, beyond uh, just uh, uh, Hyperon Plus platform as it is now, because uh, uh, there is an uh, important uh, idea of uh, knowledge layer 
uh, for the blockchains in general and the Singularity Net in particular, and uh, Hyperon uh, will be uh, hopefully the basis uh, for this knowledge layer. But uh, I, I'm also not a blockchain expert, but uh, I believe it uh, should definitely be mentioned. Uh, maybe Matt uh, can uh, add more on uh, the, this knowledge layer idea. I, I'm not sure. And that is so important. And we've even begun to look at how we can implement Meta as a smart contract language for hypercycles. So having this deep interrelation between decentralization, as Greg was mentioning, um, AGI, blockchain, all these technologies are just amazingly synergistically coming together to become a, a whole that is so exciting, so breathtaking in its scope and its possibilities. Just the Meta SDK for platform is is going to be amazing. Uh, again, I'm, I'm, I'm not the, the researcher, the expert. My understanding is that Meta SDK will will let uh, developers when they put their service uh, will be through meta be uh, identifiable interoperable with other services because they'll be using this common meta component to to interact and to enable interaction is that is that an accurate understanding or is there a better description uh, well yeah it's uh, more or less uh, accurate i i would uh, uh, say that uh, the idea of uh, meta is decay uh, came uh, from uh, the uh, vision uh, uh, from both sides, uh, both the platform needs and the hyper needs, uh, because uh, uh, we uh, faced uh, the fact that uh, uh, we would basically like to call services uh, which are deployed on the platform uh, from uh, hyper because uh, uh, we, we want uh, to not uh, download. Uh, uh, open source LLMs on our computers to think about where to uh, deploy them, where to get GPUs for them, uh, and so on. We do have uh, services, so why not uh, to call them uh, from uh, Meta or Hyper on uh, themselves? Uh, what it means? It means that uh, uh, we need uh, to have uh, uh, some uh, representation uh, uh, which uh, will. Uh, uh, be connected uh, to an uh, existing SDK, say Python SDK for the platform. Uh, and uh, we already have uh, good uh, interoperability of Meta with Python. Uh, so uh, we can uh, just uh, represent uh, uh, execution of uh, services uh, from Meta in a, a very nice and uh, convenient way. Uh, and uh, okay, so Meta is a type language. so. Uh, we would like uh, uh, to have some uh, uh, type signatures, some specifications for services. And what is it? Well, it's uh, AI DSL basically. So we want to reason uh, about services uh, in Hyperon. Uh, and uh, uh, why uh, then we uh, have uh, AI DSL as a part of MetaSDK? DK? So uh, these uh, two views uh, from the platform side and from the Hyperon side, they uh, were combined uh, like a puzzle and uh, uh, it formed a whole picture of uh, how it uh, should look like. Uh, it, it, of course, uh, not all the AI developers uh, uh, will uh, uh, want to study Meta because uh, they may use uh, other languages. There are SDKs in different languages. So uh, this process uh, will be started uh, uh, step by step. Um, at first, we uh, uh, we'll, uh, we already have, uh, by uh, uh, Neil Gaisweiler, this possibility to uh, translate part above specifications uh, to Meta and uh, uh, possibly back uh, then already. Uh, so if uh, someone wants to use uh, wants to use part above, so then uh, okay, but it's uh, still be possible to uh, call the services from Meta. And uh, Meta provides uh, a more powerful representation uh, for uh, the sort of AI ontology. Uh, so we can uh, add uh, uh, more detailed description, uh, which will enable our other services or Meta services uh, uh, to uh, reason about uh, them, to discover them in a, a better way. 
uh, and um, uh, all, all these pieces uh, are basically coming together. So uh, the, the next uh, steps uh, will be to uh, get uh, people familiar with uh, uh, it, it will not require studying meta but by itself uh, it will be just a specification language for uh, services but uh, it, it will be a sort of dsl in meta uh, and then if uh, and it, it will be fully interoperable uh, with uh, other meta programs and uh, as then if uh, people like it uh, they uh, will be will start uh, programming in meta itself and uh, uh, everything uh, will be a part of Hyperon, uh, so something like this. Yeah, that uh, actually <laughs> gives, that, that gives a really nice um, uh, a tie in to to that question that that Vita was answering. So you know, is Meta a language for experts or normal programmers? The answer is yes. With well, that, it's exactly. Really Oh, I, I'm, exactly I'm both <laughs> thank you very much for joining us today greg really appreciate you being here likewise ciao ciao uh, i would like uh, to add a uh, notice uh, on this so uh, we have been uh, discussing educational programs uh, and uh, uh, one of them uh, uh, was supposed uh, to be on uh, agi but uh, for a very wide uh, uh, audience and uh, uh, well, uh, they may not uh, be programmers uh, and so on. So what uh, can we show for them? Uh, of course, we can show a web interface to ChatGPT, but uh, uh, it's not a rocket science. Of course, uh, uh, we can uh, talk about uh, a, a little, uh, uh, say, prompt engineering stuff uh, and so on. Uh, but uh, we want to go further. And uh, basically, what um, if, if we even would like to show them an api access uh, uh, it would be python and well they are not programmers so uh, should we uh, uh, teach them or, or what but meta as a symbolic language it uh, uh, allows uh, creating a very uh, concise uh, and uh, uh, non-programmatic uh, uh, expressions uh, so we basically uh, can uh, uh, put uh, uh, this framework, I mean, uh, like metamotor framework, uh, in a such way that uh, it will be clean, clear even uh, for non-programmers, and uh, it will be uh, easier than uh, LangChain or uh, other such frameworks which really requires, uh, which really require uh, programming skills. So. Uh, basically, meta uh, at uh, the first step, as uh, Vita mentioned, uh, uh, it will be definitely for AGI researchers. Uh, but uh, in general, uh, uh, at least uh, some applications uh, of uh, this language and Hyperon itself, uh, uh, they can be for non-experts, I hope. That's beautiful. Yeah, your your excitement, your enthusiasm on this whole topic is is palpable, Lexi. Thank you so much for sharing it, for sharing this vision. Yes, alpha release will be for AGI-ish researchers, but meta as a way of thinking is for everybody, right? It's something that can help us all understand what the next generation of AI might be, programmer or non-programmer, as well as being just a... a potential utility for anybody who wants to join the decentralized AI community on the Singularity Net platform. So thank you very much all for staying late for joining today. It's been a rich discussion. I wish I could dive into a couple more topics that uh, I'd love to share. Uh, I just want to leave everybody with the thought of, of how important it is that we're launching this alpha now to spread early adoption feedback. You know, when we put an idea out into the world and give it into the hands of developers who need new tools to solve complex problems that they're facing and we start to get that feedback and that interaction and the richness that, that happens there. I mean, this is what decentralization open source communities are all about. And it will be such an uh, amazing acceleration of of technologies, just that first step, even full of mistakes, as, as Vita points out. Um, it's been beautiful. Alexei, Chief AGI Officer for Singularity Net, Vita, Hyperon Project Manager for Singularity Net, uh, Matt, uh, CSO for Singularity Net, and then of course Greg was here, CEO of Firefly and a close collaborator with us today. 
Thank you for being here. We look forward to seeing everybody again next week for our next Technical Tuesday. We'll dive a little deeper into use cases and, and experiential uh, uh, directions that we're taking OpenCog. Thank you very much, and we'll see you there.